Welcome back. The Braves are in exclusive negotiations with Sarasota County, but how did we get here? Back in February of 2015, a fan asked the Braves on their official MLB website what would happen when their contract came up at Lake Buena Vista. A beat writer for the team was there and said that there was interest in Florida's west coast around Venice. One year later, the public was told that talks were underway to bring the team to Northport. In December, Collier County dropped out of the running with West Palm, with Palm Beach failing to move forward. Sarasota became the last county standing, so where do we go from here? And joining us for more on what comes next is Jeff Malsby, Director of Business and Economic Development for the Sarasota County, and Norm Schimmel, who uh, serves on Sarasota's TERS a development council. Uh, gentlemen uh, and Jeff, uh, you had that news conference with uh, uh, the, uh, the Braves the other day. How close are we? Well, as we all know, a deal's not a deal until it's actually done. Uh, I think we are, uh, to use the vernacular of baseball, rounding third and heading for home. Uh, we've got a lot of work done already. Uh, there is yet work to be done, uh, but we are cautiously confident that we can get it done in, uh, you know, in the very near future. I, you know, during the county commission uh, the other day, I believe uh, it was Commissioner Dietrich who questioned whether the state would come through with, I think it was $20 million uh, that the county wants to go to this project. Uh, you don't know what you don't know in terms of what the state legislature would do. So what happens if you don't get the money or not as much as you hope? Well, uh, it is not that it's what the state, or excuse me, what the county wants. Uh, that is what the program calls for, $20 million. Uh, it is an application process. We have been given, you know, reasonable assurances that the funds are available. Uh, if applied for, uh, our application will be considered. And independently of each other, the county, West Villages, and the Atlanta Braves have all been told uh, from sources in, in and around Tallahassee that the funds are available and will be there for us when we apply. You know, Norm, rumor has it you're a baseball fan. I, uh, I like the game a little bit. Yes, I do. And I'm a baseball fan. Oh, I know you are. Uh, tour, uh, you know, spring training tourism is huge in Florida, uh, but are you able to say how much it contributes to the local economy with the Orioles and the Pirates up the road? We, we had a report back this year for the first time. They did, did a very sophisticated <coughs> report, which included recycled money, which I can explain. And uh, the Orioles uh, produced $81 million worth of tourism revenue. And when we say recycled money, uh, you spend money at the stadium, somebody working there. That money then goes to buying dinner downtown and that money goes to then buying souvenirs and the money gets recycled. Um, my point here about uh, the, the Braves is that they will not only produce baseball for us, but places like Warm Mineral Springs, places like the Foxley Farm, which have beautiful jumping, horse jumping, uh, the Venice Pier and everything, they will get the benefit of it. I, I want to introduce another interview that we have into this roundtable tonight. It's Gil Patterson, who is the pitching coordinator for the Oakland A's, one of the best uh, pitching coaches in Major League Baseball. He spent many years uh, pitching and working for the New York Yankees, and he knows uh, Florida Spring Training really well. Uh, Gil, part of our story that we just set up uh, you know, included the, the difficulty that some Florida teams have in terms of the travel distance it takes to get from uh, one complex to the other. The, the, uh, the Braves were out there in Orlando as other teams in the Orlando area are leaving. When you were with the Yankees, for instance, how difficult was it in terms of the time it took for you to get to Orlando for those games and for the Braves to come to play the Yankees and other teams around here? Well, Alan, uh, your son's going to find out soon when he's pitching <laughs> in the major leagues, the difficulty of, of spring training sometimes. But uh, Mariano Rivera, they did not even put a road pants in his locker. Mariano did not make any road trips. However, you are right uh, that sometimes when people go, um, the Jeters um, and, and some of the high profile players, they want to make the shorter trips. Uh, but they're also responsible and respectful enough of Major League Baseball and the fans to make sure that when they do have to travel a little bit longer distance, they put people on the field to make sure that all the fans that are watching them uh, are happy. But you're right, it, it does make a difference, the shorter trips are much more conducive 
uh, to getting guys playing time, especially when they only might play three innings and they've got to sit for six and then drive back uh, for a longer time on the bus. And, and I want to get into that more with you in the next uh, block to compare and contrast uh, Florida spring training to Arizona, which uh, you go to now in, in your role as uh, with the, the uh, Oakland A's. We're just getting started with this conversation. We'll have more on the Braves spring training along with a check of our forecast coming up, so stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the exclusive negotiations between Sarasota County and the Atlanta Braves to move spring training to Northport. Our guests tonight are Jeff Maltzby with Sarasota County, Norm Schimmel of the Tourist Development Council, and joining us by Skype is Gil Patterson, pitching coordinator for the Oakland A's. And Gil, I'm going to start with you because you're a veteran of both spring training in Florida and Arizona. And if you could compare and contrast how it is out there in terms of the proximity of all these major league teams and, and how that helps or affects the experience not only for the teams but also for the people who want to go out and watch the games. Well, anywhere that Jeff and Norm are, that's where I would like to go. Okay? <laughs> uh, and besides, you know, the, the, the Braves also need bullpen catchers, so Jeff and Norm <laughs> might be doing that as well. But, you know, I mean, I must admit, uh, being with Oakland and the Yankees for the most part, most of my career um, in Toronto and Dunedin, um, the weather uh, the weather in, in Arizona sometimes is a little bit drier. So you even in the mornings, you don't get the dampness that we get. But, uh, you know, and I think all four of us know that a number of teams, there used to be, uh, most of the teams used to be in Florida. Uh, and some have moved. Some have joined, uh, like the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, share a complex. Uh, so there's different venues. And again, Jeff and Norm are much more educated than I am into the business side of it. But Alan, you, you are right. I mean, there is, if, if you're with Oakland and Mesa and you have to travel to Peoria, that's over an hour. So there are long trips out there as well. But uh, as you said, I believe, and Norman Jeff probably know exactly, and Alan probably so do you. Uh, I think there are 15 teams in Arizona and 15 teams here in Florida. And uh, um, we still have, and that's why I think that is the greatest thing about Atlanta going to Sarasota uh, for numerous reasons, uh, and not including being a little bit closer to all the other complexes. but. Heck, I remember when I was with Mr. Steimer and we were in Fort Lauderdale, um, some guys wouldn't go on road trips when we traveled from Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale excuse me, to play over here, to play Tampa uh, when Cincinnati was here. So many changes, as we all know. Uh, some of it uh, has to do with the travel, some finances. Right. But, Alan, you're exactly right that the, uh, the closer it is, the better. Uh, for fans and and for definitely for the players. You know, but you've all heard the comments that of people who are writing our, our website or on the, to the newspaper uh, that they believe that these facilities are mostly benefit the rich owners of, of uh, the teams and are not year-round, uh, you know, contributors to the local economy. A lot of those people are watching tonight. Norm, what would you say to them? Well, immediately I would I would tell them to go online and take a look at. Um, Orioles Sarasota 365 and uh, you can come to the stadium at times and see uh, the mayors feed the hungry food uh, all sorts of things they have ice shows they if you have never seen the orchestra under the stars with fireworks there but more important than anything else they're involved in so many different things like library systems a kid can read a book and get a free ticket to a game they're totally involved in a community and the pirates who've been in Bradenton longer than any team has been in any city in Florida are totally part of Manatee. When, when the Braves come in here, this, they will be part of our community, part of our county. Jeff, I, I, Alan, I, I, yeah. let me add just a bit to that yeah. if you don't mind. I, I would say to those folks, uh, the application for the state funding has a requirement that year-round public use is a part of the project. Well, th those, that was one of two questions I wanted to Absolutely. ask you because the Orioles are incredible in terms of opening their fields uh, after spring training to youth baseball. In fact, my, my son has played on those fields uh, many times. They have tryouts. Uh, shout out to the, uh, the Scorpions who, 
who uh, do a lot of the practices there. Uh, the Red Sox do the same thing down in, in, in Fort Myers. Is there any kind of expectation that the, the Braves will do the same thing? Absolutely. It's a, as I just mentioned, it is a requirement in the state application, number one. Number two, the Atlanta Braves have a well-earned reputation for being positive, contributing members of the community. They are committed to doing that. They have said as much themselves. And uh, we are welcoming them here to do some of that stuff in the southern part of our yeah, county. Yeah, some of the concern that I have read from, from uh, our residents, especially in Northport, which is less built up than, let's say, Sarasota or Bradenton or Tampa or uh, you know, St. Pete where, uh, or Clearwater where the Phillies are, is that Northport is a smaller area and there's concern about the, the kind of traffic that spring training is, is going to produce. Well, those concerns, uh, you know, we hope to address in our efforts to enhance the features and the uh, capacity of River Road. Uh, 41 is already there, obviously, and, and uh, West Village's Boulevard is not, is, is not complete yet as well. So there are some hopes and aspirations to enhance the infrastructure as a part of this project, which, which, this project, which we hope will alleviate some of those concerns. And, and Norm, in terms of marketing this, uh, with another team here, you know, from Fort Myers up to, to Tampa, I would imagine that this is something that, you know, take this away from, from, from uh, the Sun Coast or this part of Florida, then, you know, you're in trouble. You are, but in the same light, what you have here is a marketing gem. Atlanta coming down puts more people in the stands for the Orioles, more people for the Pirates, more people for the Yankees, because people now make tours of teams yep. that are close together. And the marketing for all the events that take place within the scope of the uh, county also can be enhanced too. I mentioned before Warm Mineral Springs. Everything now is going to become a lot more professional with them, and they will help both the shop owners and everything around them. Uh, Gil, I don't want to diss our, our friends out in Arizona, but as uh, an, an environment for uh, spring training, uh, do, you ha do you have a, a favorite? Well, I mean, quite honestly, um, you know, again, I've, I've lived here in Tampa for 15 years and Fort Lauderdale for 40, and we, we know sometimes the weather we get with rain. In Arizona, uh, especially during spring training, it's drier out there, probably in general. If you would say how many more games get lost, it might be a few more here in Florida sometimes during the spring and a little bit wetter or for the teams maybe not to work out as much as they could in Arizona. Um, everything being equal though, you know, just like um, we're talking about with Norman Jeff is, you know, as many teams as we can stay here in Florida, I think it's going to benefit us. And I, and just looking at just looking at some of the notes, I went, I Googled, uh, which my wife is going to be very surprised I can even Google anything. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's funny. There are so many benefits. I mean, Major League players that actually live here, uh, and just like Jeff and Norm are saying, people who actually contribute not only the baseball team itself and the community, but the players. And, and I guess overall, from maybe just being a fan and not, not a coach and not being involved in the game, if there are 10 things and eight things are positive for the community, then I'm all for it. Uh, and, and, and only two things wrong. But if it's the opposite, if there are eight bad things and two things right, uh, just so that we can say we have the Braves here or the Yankees here for that matter, then for me it wouldn't be the same. Right. And Jeff, this is, would be potentially a 30-year deal. So this is a, a major commitment by this franchise to be here, and it, it's part of the puzzle in terms of ensuring that Florida has spring training for, for decades to come. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm a native Floridian. I grew up in Winter Haven, and I grew up, I, my a first... A Detroit fan, probably. No, not at all. I was a Red Sox fan. I grew up working in the clubhouse for the Boston Red Sox as a 10-year-old kid, probably running behind Gill in those days. Uh, <laughs> but certainly the, the, the fact that this is a part of who we are. Uh, look at the history of baseball here along the Gulf Coast. And, you know, to enhance that with a brand like the Atlanta Braves is tremendous for uh, us. Quickly, before we go to break, how long do you expect it will take to get a final deal? Uh, I am uh, hopeful that we can have this thing wrapped up in the next uh, four to six months. And, and, Norm, do you think that, you know, the, the council that you're on is going to do any kind of marketing to the public to, to show what a benefit it is to the area? Well, I think we contribute to people like Visit Sarasota County who will put the word out. We will put the word out, too, but there will be professional marketing. 
uh, on it, and it's, and it's an enhancement to the entire county. All right. Let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about the proposal to expand phosphate mining in Manatee County. Welcome back. The Braves are in exclusive talks with Sarasota County to move spring training to Northport, but will there be problems securing funding, and how can the proposed complex be built in just two years? Our guests join us now for final thoughts. And, and Gil, the, the Braves are on a year-to-year -year contract out in, in Orlando. I would imagine for the ball players and the coaches that there's that adds a little bit of uncertainty in terms of, you know, they want to know where they're going to be uh, when they're with the team and where their families can join them. No, uh, Alan, I agree with you 100%. And I, I, think, I think for them, though, as far as everything's concerned, it's not that that's not important, but those 45 days, whether it be in Orlando or hopefully Sarasota, uh, kind of for us, um, they should be able to re, uh, respond to that fine. I mean, a lot, on a lot of the T-shirts that players have, it's deal with it because they could, sometimes guys are traded from one day to the next, but I think getting to Sarasota would be tremendous for them. And, and Jeff, what do you want viewers to take away from this conversation? Because this is an investment on our part. I would like to leave this message with our viewers tonight. Uh, for a long time, we've needed a catalyst, an economic development catalyst in the southern part of our county. This is it. Uh, it has the potential to impact us like no other development project or economic development project, I should say, in that part of our county, and this is the one to get it done. I'm going to ask you for a prediction. How soon? Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but if I had to uh, say, I, I'm hopeful that by this summer we will, we will have grounds being broken and then uh, 2019 we're on. And, and Norm, just to wrap up the, the conversation in terms of the impact on tourism and the local economy, you know, it's proved to you to be a winner since the Orioles have been here and, and the uh, Pirates. Pirates and the Orioles and everybody, the Red Sox and the Twins down in Fort Myers. We're forgetting about the poor Rays. Yeah. And, and the Rays down in the Port Charlotte, which is a natural thing for uh, the Braves to play. But it's a win-win for the store owners. It does not cost the taxpayers a penny, which is more important than anything else, and it enhances the community. That's what it does. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, the proposal to expand phosphate mining in Manatee County. Mosaic made its case to county commissioners today to mine more than 3,000 acres of land at its Wingate East location. There have been protests against the plan and neighbors uh, at the site worry that it could affect their quality of their water. Here's what some of you are saying. David Iannotti writes, I think the phosphate industry has ravaged the land and aquifer for far too long in Florida. It is time for our leaders to make the ethical decision to protect our land and water and turn the backs on the dirty money. Colton DeCal writes, you don't know what you're talking about. Mosaic mines look ugly for a time, but the land gets restored afterwards. There are parks and preserves of land all over Florida from old mine grounds, and you don't even realize it. And Kevin Kumanga writes, a sinkhole at Mosaic's Mulberry facility dumped more than 200 million gallons of contaminated water into our major aquifer. Should we toss the dice again? Well like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Jeff Maltzby is the Director of Business and Economic Development for Sarasota County. Norm Schimmel is on Sarasota's Tourist, Tourist Development Council. And Gil Patterson is Pitching Coordinator for the Oakland A's. He joined us tonight by Skype from Tampa.